Well, today we're going to be working on this adorable little ruffle skirt. Um, I'm making this um, to fit a four or five year old little girl and I will give you some information on how to do a little bit different sizes and things like that as we go along. But stay tuned for the step by step video. The things you're going to need to do this little ruffle skirt are a piece of elastic and I've got mine cut to 21 inches. This is going to be a skirt for a, a four to five year old little girl so I'm doing it in that size so that's about the average size it'll come out to about 20 inches with some stretch in it so then you're gonna need six pieces these are not cut on the fold I actually cut the fold out of them because of the way I want to do it you can do it on the fold and just center everything in the back but I, I don't know why I just don't like to do it that way so I've got six pieces here for the connector pieces and the waistband and they are four inches by 16 inches a piece so that'll come out to like around 31 inches when we sew everything together around you know okay and then for the ruffles I have six pieces that will become three pieces when I sew them together and they are four and a half inches by about 21 inches each and first thing we want to do is I'm going to go ahead and go over to the machine and what I'm going to do is take these pieces and for the connectors and the waistband and I'm just going to sew them together at the ends. And so you see I've got my two connector pieces and my waistband piece sewn together and what I did was I went in and pressed all the seams down on them. It's just going to make them less bulky and, and easier to line up when I get everything else done. So I'm going to lay these aside and now we're going to get the ruffle pieces ready. And what we want to do here is, remember we have six pieces and I, I didn't cut them on the fold. There are two pieces for each piece, each ruffle. So what I want to do now is <clears throat> take these over to the machine and I'm only going to connect one side. And I left the selvage. I'm just going to sew right over that selvage so it doesn't show. So I've got my three ruffle pieces and the first thing I want to do is lay them out and press these seams down and then we're going to press a, a fold for the hems. Now we've got our seams pressed down. Now we just want to press down a hem and I'm going to do a double press, a double fold, whatever you want to call that. And I'm doing about a quarter of an inch here. And once I've done that, I'm going to fold that over on itself and it'll make a nice clean hem. So I've got my hem pressed down for all three of the ruffles. Now I just want to go over to the machine and I'm going to use the edge of the fabric as my guide to keep that presser foot right at the edge so that it, when you flip it over it turns out even. And the next thing I'm going to do after that, which I'm going to do off camera, is use my ruffler foot and I'm going to create the ruffles. And then I will close up these other side seams and we'll start connecting everything together. <clears throat> and then you see I've got my three ruffles. And we're going to start by connecting the first one to the first bottom connector. And the way we'll do that is that we're going to put right sides facing together. And I'm going to line up the seams So I've got the seams pinned on that side, and then I'm going to find the seam on this side. Probably should have gone in and pressed that seam down for the ruffle, but I didn't do it.
Then what I'm going to do is make sure that the ruffle fits the the um, connector, and it looks like it does. So I'm going to start on the side of the where the seams are, and I'm going to sew very carefully, sewing all the way down this, all the way around, and have that connected. Okay. Now. We have our bottom ruffle on our little skirt. Now the next thing that I want to do before I go connecting any other pieces is I'm going to press down this seam allowance right here. You can put a top stitch on it, but I think that kind of gets messy with stuff like this, so it's best to just press it. The next thing we're going to do is we need to connect the next ruffle and the next connector piece. With this one you want it facing the way you want the ruffle to go. You're not going to do right sides together. You're going to do wrong side of the ruffle, right side of the connector. And I'm pinning my side seams together so I've got those lined up properly. You see the, how that's going to work out once I go over to the machine and I sew this on top. And I'm going to sew that on and I'm going to sew a little closer to the edge because I've still got to put that other connector piece on that. And I'm going to, what I'll do is I'll sew the connector a little lower down so that all these um, seams from making the ruffles and all that doesn't show. We've got our second ruffle piece sewn on. The next thing we want to do is put that second connector piece on and same deal this is going to be right sides together and I'm going to line up the seams and I don't do a, a terrible lot of pinning with this and the reason for that is is because sometimes those pins get in the way and they can cause the fabric to bunch just a little bit and if you put a lot of pins in them you may think your ruffle isn't matching up to your um, connector but it actually is it's just you know the pins bunching up and crap like that so I for me the best thing for me to do is to just line up the seams and pin those together and you want to make sure when you do this part that that ruffle is down there laying flat because you can get some bunches up and it'll it won't look right so now I'm gonna go to the machine and I'm gonna stitch this connector piece and I'll be back okay and we've got our second connector piece, and I forgot this. Well, no, I didn't forget because now's the step. Um, you want to press this one just like you did that first one. And see, even though I did um, try to cut my ruffles a little longer, I've still got some of the connectors showing here. So, if you want the ruffles to lay to overlap really well, I would probably do the ruffles at about five and a half inches. That way they overlap the ruffles underneath them. So. so our next step for this ruffle is just like the one before it. We're going to do wrong side of the ruffle, right side of the connector. And uh, if I can find the... there it is. I'm going to line up the side seams. Okay, this is going to be the same deal with the the middle one. I'm going to sew it close to the edge because then I'm going to put the waistband on and I'll sew, sew it at a slightly wider seam, allow, uh, yeah, seam allowance so that um, the, hopefully these, <laughs> where I made the ruffle doesn't show. Okay, <clears throat> we've got all three layers of our little ruffle skirt sewn on. The next thing we need to do is the final connector piece which will be the waistband piece 
And since I am not using a serger, I want to go ahead before I connect this and I'm just going to fold down about a quarter of an inch for so there won't be a raw edge when I fold down the casing for the elastic. So now we're going to do the same thing that we did with the middle connectors. We want to do right sides facing together and that little hem that I've pressed down needs to be on the bottom when you put this together because it'll be on the inside when you turn the waistband. So I'm lining up my side seams and pinning them together. Mine is coming together very well. It's Everything's matching up, but you guys don't see the part I don't put on here. I actually had to go in and rip out this the seams for the ruffles and redo it because I made them too small the first time. So don't get discouraged. You haven't ruined anything. You can just tear that seam out. And um, if you're using a ruffling foot, the tighter you want the ruffles, the higher the number on the stitch, the stitch length. So if you go all the way up to a six, which my Viking goes all the way up to a six, you're going to get a really tight ruffle. If you want it to be a little looser or a little longer, um, you would lower that a little bit. You don't want to go too low. If you go anything under three, you're not really going to get a ruffle. So um, I did, I ended up doing my ruffles at the size that I have everything cut. I ended up doing a 3.5 stitch length and I turned the tension down to about four, between three and four, closer to four, and I got the perfect length. So, you know, don't get discouraged if you try it the first time and it doesn't work. Okay, so I'm going to go connect this waistband. My camera battery is done and I'm, I don't want to have to put this off till later. So, I'm going to connect this and then I'm going to come back and show you how to um, prepare the casing for the elastic. Okay, so now you can see we have all of our pieces to our skirt, and we have the waistband top. Now we just need to turn this. <laughs> Got kind of lost there for a minute. Um, turn it wrong side out, and we're going to find the side seams of our waistband. And what I'm doing is this seam that is connecting that waistband and that top ruffle and that other connector is I'm going to fold it up in there. I just feel like that's probably the best way to do it. And I'm going to fold this down. And th this project, I will say, it is really, really, really important to make sure that you have everything cut as neat as you can get it because if there's just a little bit of a crooked cut it things don't turn out even I know from experience so what I'm gonna do is go over to the machine and I'm gonna sew all the way around this waistband trying to keep everything even and I'm gonna leave a small opening so I can feed the elastic through I'm gonna put the elastic in then I'm gonna connect the pieces of elastic and close that hole up and I'm using one inch elastic um, it's probably the best kind I think this kind is ribbed it's kind of really good for waistbands and stuff and I have no idea why I keep saying kind of today but alrighty y'all so there we have it our finished skirt I did the waistband and mine turned out a little wonky I'm going to have to work on that but um other than that I think it's a cute little skirt it'll make an adorable skirt for a little four or five year old little girl you can make these in smaller sizes you just need to Measure the waist of the little girl you're making them for. You could also make them for yourself or, you know, for an adult. Um, and my recommendation is whatever size you make these connectors to make the ruffles two inches longer or wider so that you get a nice overlay. I like this. It's okay. But I kind of wanted them to lay over on the, each other just a little bit more than they are. So, other than that pretty neat little project. I'm going to work on um, doing a mock-up of 
a similar skirt to this, but it's going to kind of have a peekaboo effect where you can see the ruffles and there will be a top skirt. So once I have perfected that one, I will come back and do a video on it. So I hope you all enjoyed this little tutorial. Um, be sure to click like, share, and subscribe to my channel so you guys can get updates and see new videos that I'm working on. Peace, y'all. Bye-bye.